All right, let's take a uh, bit of a more in-depth look at some aspects of the video camoid. Posted a video last week on YouTube um, that covered uh, sort of an overview of the entire project. Here we're going to look at the buttons on the side of the camera body and at a alternate way that they might be set up. As you may recall, we used that shared surface trim to create absolutely flush buttons that we then modified in Moto. Here we're going to uh, get rid of that system and, and replace it with something else. So it's an interesting way to look at uh, the flexibility of Grobato's Boolean modeling system. What I've done there is I've gone ahead and eliminated that surface that was trimming both the buttons and the uh, larger ellipsoid that forms the camera's body. So now the buttons are just hanging out there. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove them from this cluster, from the body's cluster, and create a completely separate cluster that includes just those buttons and a, another big ellipsoid that trims them in parallel, if you will, with the body of the camera. So all I'm doing here is selecting them, removing them from the cluster that they belong to now. So now they're just regular objects again, they're just regular Grobato primitives. So what we want to do at this point is create a new cluster and we want to trim these buttons with an ellipsoid that very closely matches the body of the camera. So in order to do that I'm going to clone that very ellipsoid. Here you can see it in the Boolean list and use that clone to trim the buttons. Uh, we'll, we'll be scaling it up slightly so the buttons will be just slightly raised but their surfaces, their top surfaces will run uh, uh, very closely parallel to the body of the camera. So this is just the standard duplicate in place stuff but what's important here is that since I am duplicating a item from a boolean cluster I want to make sure I tell it that I want a non-boolean duplicate. In other words this object is not being added to the cluster from which its source object came. And we can see here that it indeed is the same ellipsoid. You can see it now in its untrimmed form. The green object you see there is its trimmed form in the cluster. The yellow is the new copy. So now we're going to take that copy and uh, that together with the buttons themselves. Get out of Boolean edit mode there. And um, create a new cluster. And I was a bit too quick there on one thing. I, I already scaled up the trimming ellipsoid a little bit. So I'm just selecting everything, the buttons and our new ellipsoid, making a new cluster from the selected objects. And nothing happens at first. This is typical because everything has its role. All objects' roles are undefined. So first I just set everything to primaries. That's always safe. Nothing's going to disappear on you. And then I take the big ellipsoid and say that I want to make it inside body. And there you have it. So you can see they're nicely trimmed and they do indeed parallel the camera's body. And, and I, would, I would point out here that of course a lot of interesting options open up at this point by altering that trimming ellipsoid you could make them taper so they were closer at some points than others or gradually even fade into the camera's uh, surface but we're going to go with the straightforward effect here and uh, here I've selected that cluster and you can see indeed there are just the button positives, button primaries and the one ellipsoid trimming object, a much simpler cluster. One good thing to take advantage of here is our fine mouse control. If you notice down there in the very lower left corner of the screen I activated that finer control of the mouse and if you watch very closely at this point while I'm moving the mouse you can see that rim of the buttons just change ever so slightly and uh, that sort of precision leads to uh, equally fine precision and detail when you take this and export it for further modeling in Moto. So that's about all there is to that. It's a variation uh, Gives you some different options, as you will see in the latter part of this video when we do take it into Moto. And of course, in order to do that, we need to generate the mesh. So coming up next year, um, we'll take a look at some of the mesh parameters. Uh, we skipped over those in the overview. So I'll show you uh, what the vital ones here. Um, one of them is this shared surface seam removal, which we're going to turn off in this case. 
Um, we don't need it to support the buttons and it makes the mesh sort of cleaner overall because you don't have seams popping up in places where you didn't intend them. We're using group by patch. That's just the most flexible and broadest range of uh, selection possibilities once you uh, get the model into Moto. And importantly, we're using this do not center mesh option that will allow us to merge this model precisely with the existing video camoid model that we already have as a Moto file. And uh, of course we're going to want to play with this new vertex map stuff so uh, I've turned on output in normals which is the Moto method. And there you see the vertex map which we will use to model these buttons uh, in Moto. And, and that's about it of course um, Mesh density and seam strip width and rows and all that will vary depending on your modeling desires, but uh, we'll just go ahead with what we got here. Hit the export OBJ button and uh, off we go to Moto to see what we got. And uh, what we will be doing there is this is the model where we left it off at the end of the overview video. We're going to go ahead and delete the camera body that we had then and replace it with the one we just created and it will fall right into place because we use that do not center mesh option and of course because this is a new OBJ we have to go through the normal Roboto script steps to get it in order um, first off we need to convert those exported normals into weight maps and as I said before just leave this parameter at 1.0 it's kind of a specialized thing you don't normally need to mess with it and uh, there you see the new weight maps that were created. The uh, normal map is gone and we have our two weight maps which we will take a peek at here. Just One is just the inverse of the other. Both are handy for depending on what kind of modeling you want to do. And we will need to run the standard Grobato prep script which simply sets up some uh, selection sets for creating channels and other effects around the seams as well as uh, activates catmill rom subdivision in this case we set the seam rows to one because we only had two seam rows in the Grobato export and it's good to have that buffer of one seam row when creating channels and other uh, seam related effects uh, one little side note here you may have noticed the camera body stayed dark uh, even after we got rid of the normals, that has nothing to do with the normals, it's just that it was automatically assigned to that kind of blackish material group used by the lens and other things. So there we just set it to the body group and things are back to normal. And here we can see those seam row selection sets created by the Roboto import script. And we're going to go ahead and use those uh, as we did on the first run through of this model in the overview to uh, create some edge effects around the various seams of the camera's body. But in this case, since the buttons have a lot of detail, I really don't want to be adding any additional geometric detail there by running the uh, Moto's push tool on those particular seam rows. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, deselect them. We're in edge mode here which I find is the easiest way to deselect those things. It's easier to get them all in with polygons or vertices or anything like that. And with those rows eliminated we'll go ahead and resave our selection set under a new name that we know excludes the buttons and that way we're free to use that selection set when doing the kinds of editing that we typically use to add uh, interest and detail to the scenes. Uh, as usual using the push tool and uh, at some point I'll do a whole video on, on seam effects there's really a, a huge variety of things that you can get uh, once again like I did in the overview I'm going for something uh, fairly simple uh, but very crisp here combination of pushing in those center seam rows because remember we just have the two center rows and not the two outer rows and then using the uh, Catmill Rom edge weights to sharpen 
the little channel that was created as a result of that edit. And it's, a, it's a simple little trick, uh, uh, subtle and clean. Um, and we'll just do that here because really what we want to concentrate on are the buttons themselves. And there you can see them. Um, you can also see that nice uh, crisp edge effect we got. But there you see the buttons, the raised buttons, that we got as, as a result of our different modeling approach in Grobato. And you can see that they indeed consist of additional parts or patches. There's the button itself and then the rim around the button, and that's because they are raised. And that's something that we can take advantage of. You want to be careful with the square button because, because it's a box, it has lots of extra patches, and uh, you, you just don't want those to get in the way of a, of a nice clean look, and you might want to avoid them as you manipulate the button. But uh, from here on out, as we did before, I'm just going to go through some fairly standard uh, manipulations of the buttons using the imported weight maps. You can see that I've got one of them selected over there on the right in the lists. And I'm simply pushing and pulling using the transform tool to get that nice domed or indented depressed button. Uh, I often like to use scale like I did there to just sort of draw the cap, if you will, of the button inward. And that often will add a, a, an extra layer of detail and give you kind of a collar or a rim around the button, as you see there. And if you want to go even further with these buttons, uh, make more dramatic moves, you probably want to run the seam slice script, which creates extra rows around the seams of any of our imported Grobato patches. And that really frees you up to make larger moves, move things greater distances or scale them by larger amounts because as you do so those additional seam rows will stretch and fill in the essentially new topology, new geometry that you're creating with those larger moves. And you'll see that right away here as I move this button out quite a ways. And we'll zoom in here and see that indeed those uh, extra seam rows come into play and, and provide the uh, you know extra row or two right there on the edge so that you still get a nice rounded edge, uh, not something uh, sudden and discontinuous. Everything continues to look uh, clean and uh, convincing. And from here forward, uh, as we did in the overview, you'll just see me using a combination of the imported weight maps from Grobato along with those edge effect weight maps that were created by the seam slice script. And uh, you can mix and match uh, any way you like and there's just a lot to be discovered uh, for such a simple, for really such a simple setup. So I'll just let this run for a while and, and just emphasize that uh, this is again part of the beauty of Grobato. Um, going back and making those edits to the original model, changing it from those flush buttons to these slightly raised buttons, was in and of itself not a difficult thing at all. Did not involve any, obviously, any manual mesh reconstruction since uh, that's handled by Grobato for you. And uh, it, it also emphasizes how it can be a good idea to divide your model into logical groups so that if you did a lot of work on other parts of the model, as I did here with the first run through with the video camoid, you can keep all of that stuff uh, and just change the parts that you want. In fact, we plan on taking that a little bit further and allowing you to swap out uh, portions of the Grobato mesh or even bring in uh, Grobato meshes and attach them to your Moto models. But that's all off in the future. Uh, in the meantime, there's a great deal of fun to be had right now uh, with these tools and effects. Um, I'm going to uh, very soon have these scripts polished up so that they show up as true Moto forms with multiple parameters so you don't have to step through all those dialog boxes. That'll be uh, our first step towards releasing a true plugin. But please go ahead and dive in right away. Uh, we really need and value your feedback and would love to see what you guys create.